Have you heard about Anchor? Well, it's one of the easiest ways to create a podcast. Not only is it 100% free, but it has a variety of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or a computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast to other sites such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many others for you. And Anchor even allows you to make money from your podcast without a required minimum listenership. So whether you've been in the podcasting game for a long time or you're completely new to it, Anchor is so user-friendly that it's basically your one-stop shop for making a podcast. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You're listening to First Fossil. where we learn together how to take that first fossil toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. My name is Candice Orushala, and I wanted to tell you guys a story to see if I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one who has these moments. But the other day, I had come home and was really tired. I didn't want to make anything for myself. And I had food ready in the refrigerator to take out and heat up and everything. But everything in me was just praying that it would take itself out of the refrigerator, put itself on a plate, put itself in the microwave for three minutes, take itself out, get itself a fork, and then put itself in front of me for me to eat. I... <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have a husband. <laughs> I don't have no churlins. I I am Lone Ranger in my house. And so when I am hungry, I am the one who has to get it together. And that day I didn't want to get it together. So I got <laughs> Vietnamese food. I just I just couldn't I couldn't do it. I was so exhausted I just I couldn't. So I I don't know. I just wanted I just wanted to see if anyone else can relate to the struggle of wanting your food to prepare itself and serve itself to you. And I don't, I'm waiting for like an, an Alexa or a, a Shmay Shmoogle, because if I, I don't want to say it and she starts talking over here, but I don't know, I just really, I, I hope I'm not alone in this. Flawless is a Texas-based natural skincare line for all skin types, started by a black woman named Bianca. After she graduated university, she had broken out with cystic acne, dry, peeling, irritated skin, and had scabs and scars all over her face. She tried different skincare methods and skincare lines for three and a half years with no success. That's when she remembered the idea of Flawless that God gave her almost four years prior and started making her own natural soaps. The name Flawless came from the Bible verse, Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, which says, You are altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. Now, let me tell you, Flawless products have done the trick for me. I absolutely love that they have handcrafted products made in small batches to ensure the highest level of quality, and they're free of parabens, phthalates, and sodium lauryl sulfate. The slow-cured traditional cold process method used makes your skin look and feel flawless, baby, and who doesn't want that? So if you're looking for skincare products that are made with care using ingredients that you can trust, go to www.flawlessnaturalsoaps.com and use my referral code Candy for JC, that's C A N D I E, the number four, and JC to get 10% off all of your purchases over $10. Choose flawless and be reminded just how beautiful you are in the eyes of God. All right, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is on how your standard in life is shaped by your brokenness. Your standard is shaped by your brokenness. What do I mean by that? First off, what is your standard? Your standard is 
that marker that you set in life to where it is supported by your morals, your principles, of something that you reach for and that you strive for, that you work towards in life every day. And it's a lens through which you see your world, the world that you live every day. If your soul, if your spirit, if your emotions, if your mindset, if there's anything faulty, which we're human, everyone has faults, everyone has hurt, everyone needs healing. But the more damaged we feel, the more broken we are internally, the more likely that our standard is going to be warped in unhealthy ways. So let me give you an analogy to work with. Let's say you have your favorite mug, okay? My favorite mug is a mug that my mom sent me one day when she was just drinking this cup. I saw her on FaceTime. We were chatting like we do almost every day, and she had this mug, and I was like, Mom, that is the funniest mug. Tell me why that mug ended up in my mailbox a couple of days later. That's the type of mom that I have. Like, if you compliment her, chances are she's giving it to you. So don't compliment her on her outfit because <laughs> she would be naked. Anyway, shout out to mom. Love you. Uh, so <laughs> I have my favorite mug and it says, I can't even on it. Okay. So let's say I had this mug and this mug had cracks in it. It had holes in it, and I still wanted to use it. Wasn't going to patch it or anything. It's my favorite mug. I'm just going to fill up my cup. Fill it up, fill it up, and let it overflow. It can't because it's leaking. It can't overflow. You can't fill up a broken cup. It's just not possible. You're going to have to fix it. But here we are in life trying to be fulfilled, trying to feel whole and feel like life is just bliss and we search for it in so many different ways when we're broken or we have a broken view of ourselves and of the world around us we might look for that in relationships that are unhealthy that are toxic that are damaging to who we are we might look for that in drug abuse substance abuse any kind of addiction. We might do a lot of very inappropriate things for attention on social media. We may just say things that are just not appropriate in general. And it's because we want a good laugh. We want to make people laugh. We might be super petty and are super mean to other people and yet cover that up with a little kiki kiki ki. <laughs> So people won't realize that we're being mean and it makes us feel better. We might manipulate a situation. We might do a whole bunch of things and feel like eh, it's not that bad because it makes me feel this way for the moment. But who wants to have something that lasts for just the moment? We want to strive for the opportunities in life that actually fill us up. So we want an actual mug that's not broken no cracks, no holes, and when we use it, we can fill it up every single time, drink out of it, fill it up again, drink out of it again without any worries, without any thoughts of how am I going to make this work? What can I do? How can I patch this up? We really want it to be fixed. Now, this is something that I think a lot of us trick ourselves into thinking that we are good to go or we can we're we're managing it we're making it work and the making it work might be like I stuck some silly putty on there or I kind of just slapped a piece of duct tape and good to go but all you've really done is cover up the brokenness without actually addressing the broken why is it broken what got it there how can I actually fix this right? Because the putty can come off, the duct tape can come off. All of our makeshift ideas of fixing can be easily reversed. 
But the question is, how do we fix this? How do we preserve our cup? If it's the only cup that we have, how do we fix it? Can we get a new cup altogether and just start over? Maybe that cup wasn't a good cup to start off with to begin with. Maybe it just wasn't the right cup and we need to have a completely different cup. But what do we do to know whether or not we just need to fix the cup that we have that's maybe not bad, it just has a bad outlook because it's broken? Or maybe this is so bad that we shouldn't have even started with it and we just need a new cup. How do we know the difference? What do we do? I have three steps that we can take to assessing what's going on and figuring this out and hopefully coming out with a better resolution on the other side. So step number one, we can acknowledge the brokenness of our cup. This takes honesty. And honesty may be a process to get to. Why do I say that? Well, it is an important paso to take when we look not just at the cup, but we look at ourselves in relation to the cup. We are the cup, basically, in in case you've missed that part. We are the cup. Who we are is the cup. And looking at ourselves, assessing every angle of us as best as we can, which again, might not be a process that we can do alone. We might have to get a life coach. I am a life coach. If you need one, you can always reach out to me and see for ways that we can work together. We can get a life coach. You can get a therapist. You can get a psychiatrist. You can get a counselor. You can get a mentor. You can get a teacher. You can get a pastor. You can get a priest. You can get a best friend, a parent, a sibling someone that you trust to help you assess your broken cup. And caveat, if you do have someone outside of you helping you draw that honesty, be prepared to hear what they say. Because this can really hurt when someone is telling you the truth. But if you remember that people are trying to tell you the truth that you're asking to figure out so you can heal, The sting from someone that you trust, especially someone you might call a friend, is better than a lie from an enemy. So your healing is on the other side of truth, even if that truth kind of hurts. And truth sets us free. So being honest with yourself and finding other people who will be honest with you in love and, sorry, in love and true care for you are crucial in these first fossil experiences to go from broken to healed and changing your standard because of this because what we're talking about today is your standard being shaped by your brokenness and I'm saying that because I don't want us to go through life thinking that who we are today has to be who we are for the rest of our lives we have every opportunity to heal evolve transform, grow, and mature all the way through life. And this is a perpetual process. It is progression. This is not perfection. So in healing the brokenness appropriately, our standards should evolve with that in a healthier direction if we're healing appropriately. So that's why the honest acknowledgement is crucial from jump because if you're not trying to be honest from the start, it's going to be difficult being honest throughout. Now, honesty does take time and honesty takes time to unpack. So there is some overlap in these steps that the more you try to be honest, actually the quicker the experience goes in the healing of the brokenness that you have in the restoration and the transformation of your standards because of that appropriate healing process. But the more you're willing to be honest with yourself and the more you're willing to receive honest commentary from people that are helping you go on this journey, the more likely it is that you will be elevated in your standards and you'll be elevated in your healing. And this is something we all want to experience. So that's step one. Step two 
is to find the root causes for why it is broken. What caused the cup to be broken in the first place? Why is my heart broken? Why are my thoughts broken? Why do I feel broken inside? What is going on? What happened? This takes honesty again as well. You have to assess not only what happened to you, but you also have to assess how you handled that, how you received that, how you internalized it, or how you added to it. Heck, how you caused it. Those are things that are hard to swallow when it's easier to just point blame and point blame and shift blame and say it's them and say it's them. But saying, well, what part did I have in this? Even if that part was in response to something else, what choices did I make? Because we choose how we feel. We choose how we think. We can cause our own brokenness because of the choices we make in our emotions and our thoughts. Because we've talked about this before. We can filter through how we think and feel. We don't have to always react. We don't have to always react to things. Immaturity is reacting. Maturity is filtering. Okay? So we want to filter instead of react. And being honest with the spaces where we did one or the other helps in the assessment of the root causes of why the cup is broken in the first place. So let's dig a little deeper and find out those root causes so we're not just like, hmm, random broken cup. Oh, well. No, 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 no. There's always a root cause. And even if you don't discover all the root causes, find as many as you can. Find as many as you can. And you might not understand all of them holistically. It may take conversations with other people and going on that journey outside of just your own assessment. But it is crucial to try to find out some of those root causes and as many as you can to give yourself a better picture of why the cup is broken and and what caused this, this brokenness to occur. So that's step two. And step number three is to then create a pathway to healing or replacing your cup. That pathway can look a number of ways And it will evolve over time, depending on the depth of the brokenness and how much there is to unpack. That might mean rediscovering yourself. That might mean rediscovering or discovering in general a relationship with God, the creator of the universe. That might mean having a reconciliation process with a friend or someone that you used to call a friend. That could look so many different ways for different people. But having that lead you to new healed spaces of your standard is a nice process to go on. It's actually really freeing. And the more you lean into honesty, the easier it is to go to the roots and see what they are and find those new pathways and creating those pathways, allowing those pathways to present themselves to you and having the bravery to take those puzzles on those roads that you may not have embarked on before or you were nervous to embark on before. Each paso, cada paso, every step that we take, every choice we make to heal, to make sure that our cup is completely restored. Fulfillment is more likely. We'll have less leaks and we'll enjoy what we get to fill our cups with. And we can refill over and over and over again without getting less than what we poured in or feeling like we have to constantly pour in to have any sense of filling in our lives. I want your standard to be shaped by your healed self, not your broken self. Your healing is crucial to support your standards, to support your morals, your principles, things that guide you in life. And everyone should want that. I want you to want that for yourself. So 
I want you to take this moment to repeat after me and make it personal. I'm going to make it personal too. So say, Candace, I choose to have my cup restored or replaced because I don't want my broken cup to set the standard for my life. I want my restored cup, my replaced cup, my new cup to be and set the standard of my life. If you repeated those words after me, I'm really proud of you for taking that fossil with me and for choosing to actually assess your broken cup and find ways to realizing that healing in a beautiful new cup where you can even (laughs) is in the palm of your hands. You just have to choose it. So that's it for today's episode. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or even an enemy and let me know on www.firstbosso.com slash podcast. Other topics you want to hear, any questions you want to pose, or even if you want to be a guest on the show to fill out the guest application, I would love to hear from you guys. And of course, you can follow me on social media at Candace Olushala anytime. Otherwise, take care, stay safe, God bless, love you guys, and we'll talk soon. Besitos. Bye.